So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Rosie, Shinko. Yeah. And everyone. It's so wonderful to see all your all your face on my screen. <laughs> I say good. I say uh, good morning, but actually it's uh, it's 7 p.m. in the evening here in Iceland. So pretty dark. Uh, the, this time of year, the sun's up around before 11 a.m. and goes down around 4, 3:30 in the afternoon. So it's pretty dark. <laughs> but uh, can you, you can hear me well? Okay. okay. Yeah, good, good. So I, I'm really privileged to to be here with you, and I, I, I'm looking forward for to it uh, for many days and uh, pair and and. and uh, wondering what I should really say. But then I, when I see myself on the screen, I say, what, what really happened? Because life takes uh, so uh, sudden uh, turns. And I, I started uh, reviewing when, when I first met Rosie. Rosie has, um, I think becoming to Iceland since 87. And I met him, uh, I think 97 or eight, maybe. And because someone, uh, when I uh, first encountered Sen, I started sitting Sen, maybe I was just, uh, had been sitting for maybe a few weeks. Oh. Uh, someone said to me, why don't you sit you should come uh, for a session, uh, and and so I well, well he told me that maybe it was better to just come the last day and and for the maybe for the last sitting maybe the four last sittings on the last day. So I said yeah of course, and I didn't know what sessions, but uh, I went anyway, and. Uh, I just remember it was so it's so clear in my mind like it was yesterday when I was um, I thought of course it was a lot of sitting like four sitting like before the end and uh, I was wondering where the teacher was because uh, Rosie wasn't in his seat but there was an empty seat on the right side of the alt altar so I just remembered when I was sitting uh, maybe the third sitting and I were saying to myself where is this this guy who's supposed to be here and and I kind of turned my head like this and and there was a door and on the door there was a circular window and when I looked at the the door and the window um, Rosie's face was 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 in the window I was looking at the <laughs> at the new guy who was sitting in the center. And I was so startled. I just, and I, I quickly turned towards the, the wall and, and sat quietly for the rest of the sitting. It's just, you know, you know, when you remember clearly when you see someone or meet someone for the first time, it's, it's hard to explain, but it was such a, it had such an impact on me. Of course, I, I don't know anything about Zen or, or or practice for that matter. And I had all kinds of ideas about practice. And I was, I remember I was surprised that Rosie would drink coffee because <laughs> I, I think I thought teachers wouldn't drink coffee or, or they wouldn't, you know, do the normal things that we we normally do but i i remember after the the sitting I, I i would sit i sat down with them and had 
coffee and some something to eat and and i remember they all laughed a lot it was a lot of fun <laughs> so they were laughing and i remember i asked rosie is this how you get when you sit that much sasen and he and he said yes <laughs> but there was a lot of uh, you know like after scene and there was a you know this bit was you know great but i i thought i would might uh, say something about me and 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 maybe something about iceland um I may uh, read a, a poem in Icelandic for you, just a short one, and and, and tell you, and, and attempt to uh, translate it into English. But sometimes I wonder how Dharma or the teaching, how how it happened, you know, how it to Iceland. But actually, it has always been in Iceland. Dharma has always been in Iceland, uh, and even even Shakyamuni Buddha, when he uh, he discovered the Dharma already there, and when we chant the, the names of our um, the teachers, the Butsu, uh, there there are six Buddhas before Shakyamuni Buddha, and and that's. Uh, saying that the, the dharma was was always there but actually the buddha he, he discovered that he he looked very deep into our um, existence and our nature and he discovered something something very intimate very deep and uh, he decided to to put it into a, a teaching and, and he decided to to tell us about it and then we have the the lineage after i think may, maybe we we humans we we are pretty clever we think we are uh, very clever and think all the inventions we we have like email and, and zoom and, and all this it's uh an invention it's possible because it's already there like the dharma of buddha nature is already there so we can uh, when we put the right things together something appears so just like pyre when we we uh, we create fire. It seems like there's no fire, but when you put the thing, the right things together, we, there's there's fire. Something appears, and it doesn't appear from nothing. Nothing appears from nothing. It's just when things come together, things appear, and. Uh, It's like the famous question, what was your original face before you were born? It's, uh, it's quite an invention or quite a discovery. And I remember Rosie told me that this, this is the most important discovery that human beings can can make or have made. And uh, I, I'm really, you know, because I'm make an effort to study and, and to, to sit and to practice. And uh, I was I was reading in the mountain and water sutra by token. So this discovery in uh, Duncan's uh, writing, they, from the, the time when he wrote them and to, 
to the time when someone discovered them. They were there are seven hundred years. So it's very difficult for for us to uh, to really understand and to to go beyond our own thinking and to let go in in our action. It's very you know I. Uh, it's always for me uh, i'm more and more surprised how how deep it is because when i when i was uh, when i first met rosie excuse me i was a pop musician uh, i was i was playing around iceland in a in a very it was actually a very popular band and we you know, go across, you know, Iceland, start playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then maybe in Reykjavik on Sunday. And this, this would go on for quite a long time. And of course, there was a lot of uh, drinking and partying. And, and so I, that's why I, I never imagined myself uh, sitting like this in, in, a, in a rope, because <laughs> You know, it was, it's just unimaginable at the time. But of course, it's very wonderful and it's very rare. But Token, I, you know, in the mountains and water shooter, he said something really interesting. He said, uh, the blue mountains are constantly walking the east mountain moving over water. Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> and then I started, okay, this is, uh, those are of course the words that are supposed to point to uh, behind our intellectual or conceptual mind. But also there's, a, there's also a, a subtle, logic in it because it's I started thinking of the tecton plates so here in Iceland we have a, uh, the Eurasian and the North American plate they, they meet here in Iceland they, they go actually up the the Atlantic Ocean uh, where they meet and they come up in Iceland, actually in Thingvellir, in that's a national park in Iceland where you can actually stand with one foot in, in America and the other in Europe. And I remember uh, Njose and Kashin, when they came uh, for a visit, we went to, to Thingvellir and to, to see it. And it's a very special place. So actually the the Blue Mountains are actually walking and they are actually the East Mountains are uh, moving through water, moving over water. So actually Europe and, and North America, they were actually one. So it's, it's interesting at this time at the, uh, you know, 1200 when people generally thought that the earth was flat but this kind of insight that you you can is just you know when i think about it it's really it's unimaginable how, how someone could have said it and of course it's all based on, on buddha's teaching And also that uh, that we actually are the mountain and are the water. You know, this is this is also very kind of hard. Uh, you know, as, you know, if I if I take this glass of water and I, I and I, I say this may, maybe this water is is me already, or or is it when I drink it or is it when it's in my stomach and when it's into my body? Is it then me? Or when when 
exactly does this water economy since I'm 80% water, you know. And also minerals in us, iron and, and all kinds of minerals, just like the mountains. So we, we cannot ex exist in a void. We have to exist simultaneously with everything. So maybe, you know, because uh, human beings like intuitively have known You know, even before Buddha, and and I think maybe we try to express it in many like in arts and and you know music. I'm a musician, um, or just just by moving and by you know driving the car and 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 just in in regular life we we we're constantly expressing and and. And some some poems are really actually wonderful. I, I thought I'd uh, read an Icelandic poem for you first in Icelandic and then translate it into to English. And and this is this is by a, a non-Buddhist. And I I, uh, I noticed it in the New Year's because uh, President of Iceland always comes in, in on TV on New Year's Day and he says something to us and, and, you know, talks about the year that, you know, was just ending and, and what's, you know, tries to say something nice. And he, some, you know, the written, written words and the po, uh, the poets in Iceland have, has always been the real heroes here in Iceland, because I think, Iceland, you know, in Iceland through the centuries, we were so poor, there were, there were no instruments, no musical instruments. And we lived in, 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 in small houses made of uh, stone and, and soil. And uh, so I think maybe yeah, until maybe, I, I don't know, one or 200 years ago, one, we, we had the first instruments uh, or, so we, we uh, I think that's why we, the written words is, is, is really highly regarded and the pop, the poets uh, were like national heroes. But this poem is, is by a, a person called Girdir Eliasson. And, and uh, president read it during his uh, presentation on New Year's uh, Day and I, 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 I noticed it. So I'll, I'll read it in Icelandic and then I'll, I'll translate it for you. Here goes. Hugar fjallið. Að koma hægt inn í byrtuna eins og að frá sér valjós að döggvottu túni um nótt að haustlægi og stíga hikandi inn í geislan. That's, that's the poem. So it's very short, but it, it's interesting. The, the name of the poem is Mountain of Mind. And, and uh, it goes like, you know, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll translate it for you. It, it goes like this, mountain of mind. To emerge slowly into the light, like putting down your flashlight in a field wet of dew at night in the fall and step hesitantly into the beam. It reminded me of uh, Buddha's final, final words, be your own light or be a lamp unto yourself. And you know, being our, our own light, discovering our own light. I think it's so important. And 
in some of sutras, like in Santo Kai by Sakito Kisan, I always thought it's so beautiful when when it says uh, within light there is darkness, but do not try to understand the darkness. And within darkness there is light, but do not look for that light. Light and darkness are a pair, like the foot before and the foot behind in walking. I, I think it was around Wow, it's 25 minutes past already. Okay. I was just starting. <laughs> anyway, so I, um, it was the year 2000 when I decided to come for the first time to Sonoma Mountain Sand Center. I came with my wife, um, Gila Yochi. We stayed there for the whole winter. I remember I I sold my car and, and I rented my apartment I, to, to be able to to come. Uh, it was the, maybe the most wonderful time in my entire life because it was when I first encountered really a real practice. You know, I, I met so many wonderful people and I had so many things. So when I when I came back to Iceland, I quit the band. <laughs> and I I I'd already quit, you know, all the all the stuff. But within light there's darkness. It's when within light, it's not beside light or is within light there's darkness darkness but do not try to understand it's because we want to understand everything i think it's very hard to actually be someone or something that you you cannot really understand so we have to come to terms with it we have to accept and we have to trust trust our life, trust life to live because it knows how to live. And in Genjo Koan, uh, Dogen Soki says that things advance and understand themselves is enlightenment. It's when you allow life to live and you accept the, the mystery of it. And within darkness, there's light, but do not look for that light. And Dogen says in Gancho Koan, that we move ourselves and understand all things is ignorance. We want to really, you know, live. But living is, is not just our personal, personal thing, it includes everything. It's no beginning, no end. And light and darkness are a pair like the foot before and the foot behind in walking. It's really beautiful, I think. The commute or accumulation, accumulation of, of ignorance and bad ideas are tremendous. Because um, uh, there's another sutra, the Great Light Dharani, also talks about the light, but it also talks talks about the disaster. And I, when I was in Sonoma Mountain in the year 2000, I, I, I stumbled. I, I didn't like this word because I thought, you know, I was pretty bad, but, you know, 
disaster, maybe, maybe not, but maybe, maybe I was. But the great irony is 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 uh, is uh, always uh, in in Japan and also in our practice. It's chanted uh, for the Ita Ten. The the protector of Dharma, and it's actually thought of you know when when before the 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 breakfast when we when we we hit the hand, and then the kitchen uh, responds. It's really saying, "Did you put the fire out?" And the kitchen says, "Yes." Did you get the, did you put the fire out? The kitchen said, yes. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. It's, it's, you know, the disasters when we're, when we're uh, not mindful in our lives. And, and then it, it can be very disastrous. So I was also thinking about, you know, I wanted to say so many things, you know, I was thinking about, you know, global warning, warming, uh, animal cruelty and, and wars and all crazy things we do when, when we live our lives in, in complete, uh, I say, ignorance. And when millions of people come together in, in complete ignorance, there's, there's disaster, you know. And that's why I think it's very important because now human beings are, are like a small baby playing with uh, fire. We, we have too much uh, power we don't understand. So it's, I say, you know, just, just for the sake of and, and blessing of, of all sentient beings, we should really consider, we should ask ourselves the big question, the question of life and death. Don't, don't be afraid of asking, just ask. The answer is already there. So anyway, I think I uh, actually, time's up. But uh, if, if we have one minute, I, I, would, I, I would like to read the, uh, another poem. It's called The Hume Route. And then I, you know, it's just a beautiful poem. And I, I didn't see who the who wrote it. I think it, it said it was an old, you know, uh, it came from our uh, the Chinese lineage in Buddhism. I, I know Dai Sansinam, he, he used it a lot. And, and, and it goes like this. Coming empty-handed, going empty-handed, that's human. When you are born, where do you come from? When you die, where do you go? Life is like a floating cloud which appears. Death is like a floating cloud that it disappears. The floating cloud itself originally does not exist. Life and death coming and going are also like that. But there's one thing that always remains clear. It is pure and clear, not depending on life and death. Then what is the one pure and clear thing? So I think so much for being with me here today. Yeah.
<laughs> so should we uh, jump? To, uh, yeah. 